So I'm back working on the Murray mower. I cleaned it up. And I'm just gonna, you know, start repairing it and see what, you know, what happens. So I want to get the battery out of it so I can charge it and see if that fixes it. And then I want to do something about that tire. Because that rear tire makes it a pain to move around, but it, oh well. I'm just gonna spray down the threads a little bit. Because it looks like they're pretty rusted on there. And I can try to just get them off. Oh, that's I'm tightening it. I need to loosen it. There we are. Fantastic. Unfortunately, the negative side is a carriage bolt. So I can't use a wrench on that side. And it's just spinning in the terminal. So that's going to be interesting. I'm going to try to get new hardware. Where, what happened to that thing? This is on there pretty tight. Maybe I'll cut it off. Yeah, I could do that. Yeah, that was difficult enough. I will definitely be getting new hardware for this battery. Let's see. How do I pick it up? Hmm. Bugs. I'm gonna assume this battery is not usable. Yeah, 2014, I think I can uh, put a new battery in this, and I think it will be fine. So I put a different battery on the charger that I'm going to try to use, and, um, and so that will be ready. I'll probably leave it charging overnight. Anyways, I need to get this tire off. And I was looking at this tire, and it has a lot of dry rot on it, obviously. It's been sitting in the sun for who knows how long. And uh, I think I might just try to... I think I have extra tires uh, with a rim and a tire. That's good. I'll try to inflate this and see if it takes air. So first, I'm just gonna see if it will take air. And you just want to make sure that the tire is seated evenly around the rim. There we are. That was a lot easier than I thought it would be. I don't want to put too much air in it because of all this dry rot.
And this is just soapy water to spray around the tire to make sure you have no leaks. And if there is a leak, you can see right there, it'll bubble out. So we got one leak right there, and that's just this side, and uh, one right there. Maybe a small one right there. Valve stem isn't leaking. As for this side, this is big dry rot. Shockingly enough, that's not leaking. Okay. Let's see. Hmm. I'm also thinking I could try to put uh, slime in it. I have that to seal it. I've tried to use it in the past before, but it never really worked for me. And it's just a mess to use, so that's why I don't exactly like it. But, well, I guess you can't hurt it. tried to use tire slime in the past. I just it never worked for me. Whenever you're using tire slime you want to get all the air out and then uh, remove the valve stem and pump it in through the valve stem. Now you can just, um, if you were to remove the bead of the tire, you can just put it in that way. But, I don't know. As I said, I'm not a fan of it. It's messy. That's a problem. And then something else I don't like about it, when you use it, now it's inside the tire, in between the tire and the rim. Well, obviously, if you need to take the tire off and put a tube in it, because now you got a bigger hole that the slime can't get to, then you know, you're just dealing with a mess. So that's just why I don't prefer it. But I'll try it again. kind of want to roll it back and forth, allowing the slime to get to every part of the tire that it needs to get to. And I don't see any more leaks. Even all along here. Yeah, I've never had any luck with slime. Oh well, it is what it is. Let's get this tire put back on. And I did look at the other spare tires I had, and none of them will fit. 
so that's fine. That went on really easy. Too easy. All right, the cap I kind of destroyed. It's just a black plastic cut cap that goes over that plug. All right, that's gonna make it a lot easier to roll. And it's gonna look a lot nicer. Wow. Looks like a good machine. Next thing I need to do is, uh, I need to remove that one bolt that's in the front because that's the only bolt in the engine and it's, it's kind of funny to watch the engine run and just move all over the place, but, well, I need, uh, three more bolts. So, I'm gonna remove that bolt and I'll see what I can, uh, find. I just got back from the store. I bought all four brand new bolts. And this is going to be difficult to put them in. And so after I screw the engine back down, it's going to be good to drive around. Because everything else is... Everything else is done. I mean... I'm not done with it yet, but everything else I need to do to drive it around is practically done. Of course, except for a few things, so I can drive it for an extended period of time, which is the shroud covers need to go back on. So this is the battery I had charging. It's not the same battery I removed from the machine. It's been charging at about 13.5 volts, and if we just remove that, it should be 12.9. Alright, yeah, that's good. It's slowly going to- yeah, that's fine. That should be fine. Perfect. Alright. Let's get this put into the machine. There's the battery in the machine. I have brand new hardware to bolt everything back together in terms of the cables. And then, yeah, and then I'm gonna try to start it and see what happens. If I can figure out how these cables go.
windy outside. Alright, let's see if it's gonna start now. Yes, it has oil and fuel. So that should be fine. Alright, so that's going to be it for today. I'm going to remove the mower deck later so I can inspect it and see what's going on because I don't think the blades were engaging. I think it was just eating up the belt. So, it might be a stuck pulley or I don't know. So, I'll figure that out. Uh, that's going to be a later video though. So, that's it for right now. Uh, on to the next project.